two of the three Konami collections are out as of right now, for $20 each. The Konami Arcade Collection and the Castlevania Collection, still waiting on the Contra one, but I'm very excited about that. So I'm gonna tell you my thoughts, and I have very mixed feelings on them. I don't think they're terrible collections, but there are definitely some aspects of both that could have been a little bit better. Let's start with the Konami Arcade Collection. I, I don't even know where to get started with this one. When it first released, this collection had an incredibly annoying bug that kept me from even wanting to play it. It has multiple graphic settings and filters that you can adjust to your liking, but this bug that was in the game would make it think that you were holding down the joystick the whole time on the pause menu. So when I paused to go to the graphic settings, it just kept scrolling down automatically, preventing me from adjusting any options to my liking. I thought it was my console at first, but I looked online and other people were complaining about the exact same thing. Thankfully, it does seem like this has been fixed with a recent update, and it works fine on my Xbox One X now. Oddly enough, in my living room where I have my Xbox One S, yes, sometimes I like to play out there, the update didn't fix the bug at all, and it still happens. This is a collection of old games that I couldn't imagine was difficult for Konami to produce, so having such an annoying bug like this after paying 20 bucks, it just doesn't sit well with me. One thing I do really like about this set is that it also includes a digital ebook with behind the scenes stuff. I love this kind of content always have information about the games, developer interviews, concept art. I get a lot of value from these kind of extras. Annoyingly enough, the bug I was talking about prevented me from accessing this too beyond page one. It would just act like it's going to page two and then would flip back to page one automatically. But let's get into the games offered. Some of the titles might look a little funny to you if you're in the US, like Nemesis instead of Gradius, Vulcan Venture instead of Gradius 2. Why not have multiple versions of these games that you could choose from instead of just one? In some cases, different versions had major differences in terms of gameplay and improvements. I can't imagine that would be too hard to add in, since some of these versions have already been available in the Arcade Archives downloads on pretty much every modern console. Maybe licensing issues? I, I don't know. The first game I jumped into was Thundercross. I actually just planned to play this one for a small amount of time and then move on to something else, but I found myself playing through the entire game. I really like this one, it's actually awesome. Bright, vivid colors, and it's a typical space shooter where you fly a cool ship and you blast away waves of enemies. You've got upgradable weapons, you've got a huge bomb blast. Now the downside to playing this here versus an actual arcade which is expected, is that it's incredibly easy. Since you're not actually using coins, you can have endless credits. You find a boss too hard, let him kill you, and then you can continue and come back with all your bombs fully restocked, and then you can take him out in two or three hits almost instantly. Great game, just really easy. Typhoon, also known as Ajax, is also really cool. Another shooter with different perspectives. The first level has you in a 3D kind of stage, almost like Afterburner, as enemies fly towards you, then the angle changes to a vertical shooter. Vertical shooters are like beat-em-ups to me. They're simple, they never get boring, they're just really fun to play. Nemesis, also known as Gradius, Vulcan Venture, also known as Gradius 2, and Life Force, also known as Salamander, are all really similar. If you've been a gamer as long as I have, you've played at least one of these games. Gradius is just a side-scrolling space shooter, so is Gradius 2 and Life Force. The pace of the gameplay in all three of these is a bit slower than something like Thundercross or Typhoon. I wouldn't say they're for everyone though, and they all feel very similar, but still worth checking out, each one in their entirety. Then we have Scramble. This is a throwaway game. It's an arcade from 1981. Just because it's old doesn't make it a classic. What you see here is what you get. It's, it's just not really fun. It's very simple. And I feel the same way about Twin B. Another vertical shooter that's very cutesy. It's so simple, I couldn't find it fun to play either. Not much to say about this one. This footage is really everything you need to know about this game. As far as I'm concerned, Scramble and Twin B were completely unnecessary in this collection. With a title like Arcade Classics, why not some actual Konami Arcade Classics? Like the Ninja Turtles beat-em-ups or the Simpsons. Again, this is probably due to some licensing issues I don't know about, but my point still stands. Not everything in this collection is a classic. And the final game, Haunted Castle. This choice is bizarre to say the least. It feels completely out of place. You notice every single game in here is some kind of vertical or horizontal space or plane shooter. So Haunted Castle feels like a stranger here. And everyone on this channel knows I'm a huge Castlevania fan, but Haunted Castle is not a very good game, especially compared to the actual Castlevania games. 
it's very clunky. Some of the sprites are oversized, making later parts of the game incredibly frustrating due to horrible design. And fair warning, it is incredibly punishing. And on top of that, it's also been available forever on Xbox One and PS4. I got it on PS4 for like $4 on sale, so this is nothing special. Overall, the Konami Arcade Classics Collection feels really lazy. I wanted to play this and be really excited about it. There's five great games two throwaways, and Haunted Castle, which is somewhere in between okay and eh. For $20, if you're a huge fan of shooters, sure. But I think $14.99 would have been the sweet spot here. I think it's slightly overpriced for the content that they've given us. There's just really nothing that makes this collection special or a must-have. Now, the Castlevania collection, it looks similar to the Arcade Classics one. You have your eight games, and you still have that digital ebook filled with awesome extras that I spent a good hour looking through. It even includes a miniature timeline to explain where these games take place, and who's related to who, and it semi-confirms that Kid Dracula is actually young Alucard, something that's been a big fan debate, although it is kind of obvious. And best of all, no pause menu bug, even on day one. This collection works, and it works perfectly. Overall, I think the set of games here is much better than the Arcade Classics one with all the main Castlevania essentials, which is especially cool for someone that's just getting started with the series. Why not start with the first games that came out? And another awesome aspect is the scrolling story text for each game, explaining the story taking place with incredible detail. Enough for any newcomer to the series to understand. But in here, what we do have is the original Castlevania. I cannot say enough how much I love this game. There's really nothing bad I can say about it. It invented Castlevania, it stands the test of time, and as a kid I never imagined there would be a day where I'd be playing this as part of a collection on next-gen consoles. Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest, on the other hand, is just... it's not as good. This one's controversial among fans. Some hate it, some love it. I'm in between. I don't find it very fun, and I'm glad the change in gameplay didn't really take off. Instead of fast-paced gameplay destroying every creature in your way, it does focus more on exploring and finding items, similar to what Zelda 2 did compared to Zelda 1. Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse acts as a prequel to the original and plays just like it, with added characters and multiple paths. It's an improvement in a major way, and each character has their own set of moves. And it's quite possibly my favorite Castlevania game of all time. Super Castlevania 4. In Japan, it was created to be a remake of the original. In the US, it was translated to act as a sequel to Simon's Quest, so pick whatever story you like best. This one is another absolute classic and one of the best games you could find in the entire Super Nintendo library. Graphically, it was really impressive for its time, added in whipping in multiple directions, and it's got an incredible soundtrack. Castlevania The Adventure for Game Boy. It's great that Christopher Belmont is getting acknowledgement finally, but let's be real for a second. This game sucks. It plays so slow and Christopher feels like he's walking underwater through the whole damn thing. It feels like someone's pushing you back constantly. Instead of this one, I really think they should have added in Castlevania Legends. Legends is slowly becoming the forgotten game of the series starring Sonya Belmont. It would have been a perfect time to bring this game back, plus it's much better than the adventure. Castlevania 2, Belmont's Revenge on the other hand, is much better. I dare say this one is actually good. The incredibly slow movement has been fixed completely, and there's now a stage select that lets you go to different environments. This is the better one out of the two Game Boy games included. Kid Dracula never released in the US besides the Game Boy reboot slash sequel. I was actually looking forward to this one since I've never actually played it. It's a really fun little platformer which makes no sense in the existing storyline, but who cares? It's a bright, colorful NES game that's simple and easy to get the hang of. As Kid Dracula, you just jump and shoot your way through the adventure, and Dracula's castle from the original game is actually recreated in here. It's great. The final game, Castlevania Bloodlines. The Sega Genesis exclusive and only Castlevania game. Growing up, this was always the cool one. It's got really dark undertones taking place during World War I and a Europe in chaos. There's blood, there's gore. I always thought it had a Splatterhouse vibe to it, which I'm also a big fan of. But overall, is the Castlevania collection worth $20? I'll put it this way, Castlevania Bloodlines alone is worth $20. And with all these other games, hell yeah it is. Even though some of the selections could have been a little better, like Castlevania Legends instead of the Adventure, and it would have been nice to have Dracula X for Super Nintendo, especially since Rondo of Blood set is only available on PS4. At least we would have had some version of that game on all consoles. But still a great collection nonetheless, and I'm hoping that Konami gives it a second collection with more games, and it seems like they actually care about this one, unlike their Arcade Classics collection. 
since they have already confirmed that they're adding the Japanese version of some of these games in a free update. By the way, the Japanese version of Castlevania 3 is actually way better. It's got much better sound, it gets rid of the censorship and some monsters of cooler designs, and I'm sure some players will appreciate how much easier it actually is. The only downside, which might not be anything to some people, are the achievements and trophies in this one. They're really easy to get. I wanted something challenging like beat one of the games without using any sub weapons, beat them without dying, something that would make me go through over and over to try to tackle really hard rewards. All you have to do is beat all the games with all the characters available and you've 100% you've of the whole thing. There's nothing special you have to do at all. Whereas in the Konami Arcade Collection, I beat all the games and I got nothing because they require you to get certain scores and I guess I wasn't good enough to get those scores. If you're deciding between these two sets, the Castlevania Collection is definitely more worthy of your money. And I will absolutely be reviewing the Contra Collection once that comes out, so stay tuned for more. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button with all of your strength. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any new content. You can follow me on social media or go into my community tab for updates. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can support the channel directly on Patreon. This is Fabian, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.